my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought, let's hold what
So I'll read that one first tonight, and then we will get in a little more of the message uh, this morning. Uh, just before we read, this morning uh, we talked about what happens if we do not indoctrinate our children in verses 4 through 7. And then we talked about what happens if we, or what happens if we do indoctrinate them, and then in verses 8 through 11, what happens if we do not indoctrinate our children in the things of God. And I think you saw this morning that we're in trouble if we don't do that. Amen. And we need to teach our children what's right. It needs to be passed down from generation to generation. We do not I need to be raising generations that do not know the Lord. The Bible says about Joseph, there came a day, a generation that knew not Joseph. And let me just say this today. We don't want to get to the place where we have a generation that does not know God. And so let's look at this one verse. The Bible says, Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. And so I'm preaching on this chapter on the subject of limiting God, but yet we've been going verse by verse in the Word of God talking a little bit about this subject. Father, may you add your blessing tonight. And may you touch the Word of God this evening. Give me liberty and clarity of mind. Lord, I pray you'd help us to grow as your children. And we'll give you the glory for all that you do. In Christ's name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated tonight. Remember I said to you this morning, and I want you to just hang with me here a moment. But I said to you this morning, uh, as you think about in the Word of God, uh, these verses... In verses 4 through 7, the Bible talks about how we need to share with each generation. 8 through 11 this morning, the Bible talks about what happens to a generation uh, that we don't pass it down to. The Bible says they kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in His law. And so we know that God's people turned away from God because... We lost it generation after generation after generation. Uh, I was talking to Miss Dana down there at the door this morning, and she said she read an article to give you the idea of where we are in our country. Uh, she had read an article uh, where it was in elementary school, middle school children uh, were putting this. Uh, stuff on their hands like we use for sanitizer. We're putting that on their hands in their public school classroom and then they were trying to touch everything in the classroom with it on their hands because their teacher was allergic to it. And they were hoping that she would get sick and even die and they wouldn't have to deal with her anymore as a teacher. Now can I say something? That is absolutely sick. But if you think about this, and realize in our country something's went wrong. Something has happened. And can I say this? I'm convinced we're not passing down from generation to generation that which needs to be done. But it also could be that we've gotten to the place where we have forgotten things that we need to remember. Now I want you to go back with me just a moment. And I want you to see a few things here in the Word of God tonight. First of all, I want you to see Israel's salvation. Look at verses 12 through 16 tonight. The Bible says, Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through. We all know what he's talking about. The Red Sea crossing. And he made the waters to stand as a heap. In the daytime also he led them with a cloud and all the night with a light of fire. He clave the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as out of great depths. He brought streams also out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. One time he told Moses to smite the rock. Another time he told Moses to speak to the rock. You say, preacher, why is that so significant in this chapter? If we're going to understand limiting God tonight, there's one thing we've got to get a hold of. We have got to remember what God has done in the past. And I say something to you tonight. 
When we get to the place and we forget about what God's done in the past and we forget about the God we serve and that He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we think or ask, then we get to the place in our life where we don't trust Him like we ought to right now and now. Can I say this tonight? The same God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the same God of Moses and Elijah, the same God of Daniel and Meshach and Abednego, the same God of all of those in the Word of God is the same God that you and I serve today. And God does not change. He does not change. So I think it would be well to all of us tonight if we would simply remember our salvation. Amen. Remember when God, so to speak, opened up the waters. Remember when God fed us from the rock. And the Bible says Jesus is the rock. And so when we realize that, all of us have a reason tonight to rejoice and to praise God over all that God has done for us. And all God's people said, Amen. Israel's salvation. No doubt the psalmist is leading up to verse 41. I want you to see secondly, not only Israel's salvation, but Israel's sins. Look if you would in the Word of God. And you don't want to read all of these, but in verses 17 through 66, you begin to find Israel's sins. Now I'm going to break it down just a little bit so we don't read that many verses. Can I say this? It has always been sin and apathy that's kept people away from God. And can I say this tonight? You and I need to understand from where we've been brought from to yeah. where we are today, we need to understand that we cannot let sin get in our life. If it gets in our lives, and it can get in my life, it can get in your life, I know one's immune from it, and if it gets there, it will divide us away and cause us to make decisions that will not be God-honored, and we'll end up like the nation of Israel, where they didn't know which way to turn. And to this day, they're still recovering from those decisions. As you look back in the Word of God, I want you to see in chapter 78, verse 17, we'll skip down a little bit here, on the lust of the flesh. Look at verse 17 of chapter 78. The Bible says, And they sin yet more against Him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. And they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. Now let me give you an idea of what he's talking about. Israel got to the place where they made the statement. Remember when they got tired of manna? And they made the statement that same old manna. Boy, there was a day when they were hungry and they were thirsty and they were glad there was manna from heaven and they were glad there was water from the rock. But all of a sudden now, they said, we're tired of that. We're tired of that same old manna. Do you know when you need revival in your life? Do you know when you need a stir in your life? It's when you get tired of the same thing that used to stir you, my friend. I want to say today, I'm still stirred by the same thing that I was stirred by a long time ago. And I don't want that to get old to me. The Bible goes on, hallelujah. The Bible goes on to say, yea, they spake against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Well, I hate done. He's already done it one time. Amen. 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 Well, preacher, can God do it again? He's already done it one time. Can I say this to Calvary Baptist Church? We don't need to run around like a bunch of doubters limiting God. We don't have to say, oh, I don't know how we're going to do that. Oh, I don't know how we're going to do this. I tell you, Lord, have mercy. I tell you what we need to do. We need to fall on our face before a holy God and say, that is nothing. I say nothing too hard for God. Amen. 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 So you find Israel begins to struggle in their flesh. The lust of their flesh. They wanted what they wanted. 
They got tired of what God had. And let me say to you, be careful. When you start wanting more what you want than you want what God wants. One of the greatest revivals that ever took place was in the country of Wales. In the country of Wales in revival, they literally, literally closed down the alcohol establishments. The prisons ran out of prisoners. It was such a great move of God in revival of Evan Roberts in that day that revival swept across the land of Wales. It was to the point that those men of God, Evan Roberts, could walk down the street and men on a bar stool in, in, in a pub would fall under conviction. Fall off the bar stool on their knees and cry out to God for mercy. God so moved in that nation in revival that it stirred an entire country. Amen. America saw a little bit of that years ago. We call it the Great Reformation. We talk about how God moved in America. But there was a time that God was moving in America. And, uh, and certainly in Wales. But now if you go to Wales, it's one of the most wicked countries in the world. Right. You know what happened? A generation came along. Amen. Yep. And it was not passed to that generation. Right. Amen. So you see the lust of the flesh, but secondly, you see the lure of the world. Verses 40 through 45 of this chapter give us a little bit of that. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Our text verse, they remembered not His hand, nor the day when He delivered them from the enemy, how He had wrought His signs in Egypt and His wonders in the field of Zoe. And He turned their rivers into blood and their floods uh, uh, that they could not drink. He sent down all sorts of flies among them which divided them in frogs which destroyed them. He gave also their increase under the caterpillar of their labor under the locusts. He destroyed their vines with hail, their sycamore trees with frost. He gave up their cattle also to the hail and the flocks to hot thunderbolts. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, indignation, and trouble by sending evil among uh, angels among them. He made a way to his anger. He spared not their soul from death, but gave their life over to pestilence. Preacher, what do you say? That's what God did to get them out of Egypt. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Right. But do you know what they said? They said we'd been better off right. if we'd have died in Egypt. Right. Amen. Good. The lure of the world. Yes. Everybody listen to me. Listen to your pastor tonight. There will come a day for every one of you that are saved that the world will try to lure you. Amen. The, law, the world will paint a picture to you and you will begin to say, well, I think it was better in the world than serving God. There will come a time in your life when Satan will try to do whatever he can to pull you away by the lust of the flesh and the lure of the world. He'll try to pull you away from the very things that you said in your heart, I'll never, ever walk away from. Right. Young people, listen. That's how we lose generations. Right. Amen. It's the lure of the world. It's the lure of the world. See, you've got the idea, I've had the idea, that this world's got more to offer me than God does. That this world is more pleasing than God does. You, you've got the idea that as long as seem like I, I'm in church, I, I seem to fight so many battles. I, I think it was better when I was in Egypt in the world. Can I say something to you, friend? Your worst day serving God is better than the best day you ever had your time down on your way to heaven. Psalm 78 verses 40 through 55 give us the idea of the lure of the world. <laughs> verses 17 through 20 give us the idea of the lust of the flesh. I 
can literally go on and on with these and I can talk about other things, but I want to move just a moment to our text verse. Now after you've heard the preaching this morning and the preaching tonight, you have to ask yourself the question, what does it mean in verse 41 to limit God? The Bible says they limited the Holy One of Israel. That word limited, the verb is only found three times in the Bible. Now it's not the word limited the other two times. But it's only found three times. I did a word study on it. It's a very interesting word in the Word of God. The word itself, and I'll share it with you in just a moment, means to be scrabbled. S-C something. R-A-B-B-L-E-D. Scrap. It means to be scrap. Now I'm going to explain that in just a moment because you've got to understand what it means to limit God. I got ready when I began to study this to preach on some things that limit God. And I could do that. And I was going to do that in a topical message. But the more I studied this word, the more I realized I would do it in an injustice because literally you've got to understand what the word is trying to say to us. Amen. What does it mean when it says Israel limited God? How do you limit a God of all resources? How do you limit a God that can do anything? How do you stop God? How do you stop God's movement? How do you do that? And yet Israel did that. Now, I want you to listen just a moment. The word scrap that I just used means to grow or to leave a mark. In other words, as if you just made a mark with your hand or a scratch. It means to draw a line, so to speak. And so, as you think about that, I want you to listen to two other verses. 1 Samuel 21 verse 13 is the other time the verb is used. And he changed his behavior before them and found himself mad in their hands and scrambled on the doors of the gate and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Talking about David. David was in a bad way and he laid up against the gate and scrambled. In other words, there's a mark there where David so confounded in his life left the mark of where he was. There's another verse. Ezekiel 9, 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sign and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And you know a little bit of where that's headed if it comes to eschatology and the book of Revelation. But I want to say something to you. That same word mark, that same word scrabble, that same word limited, is all the exact same verb in the Hebrew. It means the exact same thing. That mark was a sign. David against the post left a sign, left a mark, and then Israel limited God. Now I want to bring it down tonight if the Lord will allow me for a moment very, very practically and we'll be done. If you think about these things and you think about what Israel was doing, and how that their children, let's go back, how their children at one time followed God, but then a generation came that said, we don't want that, and turned away from God. And now you've got their lust, and you've got their lure, they're pulled away from God, and, and they're pulled away from the things of God. Then God says in the middle of those verses, God says, you have limited the Holy One of Israel. Right. Other words, you scrabbled a line. You said, that's it. Mm -hmm. Don't everybody stay with me. Because I am convinced that there are Baptist churches and Christians yes. all across this country right. with no vision that have scrabbled a line Amen. a long time ago. Amen. I am convinced that if you're not doing anything for God and you have no vision for God, then you have said to God, that's all I want. Now I'm going to say something to you tonight. God is a very big God. And God is omnipotent.
servant. He is all powerful. God is power. God has power. And I want to say this. It is not limited of what God can do if we will simply surrender to His will for our lives. believe that tonight? Amen. So many of us limit, limit the Holy One of Israel. We limit it. We limit him because we might be tagged by somebody. We limit him because it might affect our lifestyle. We limit him because of the lure of the world. It is yet to be seen what God can do with people that give themselves totally and completely to Him. But yet we limit. it. See, I think in our mind, we think we serve a God of yesterday. I do. I think when we read the Bible, we think that's a different God than the one today. I think in our mind, we're thinking, well, yeah, that was great then, boy. I wish I could have lived here. I'm glad to be living now. Amen. Amen. Hey, the same God of then, He's the same yesterday and today Amen. and forever. Amen. God's immutable. God does not move. He does not change. Amen. He is the same Amen. God. Amen. 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 So what He did before, He can do again. Amen. But Amen. could the problem be that you've already drawn the line. Could the problem be that I've already drawn the line? And I'm telling you, when you limit, you ever heard of saying somebody say this, that person's so intelligent, but they never really have used all of their potential? Right. That person could go a long way, they've wasted their <coughs> potential. They got to that place. Where you got a guy that has a a engineering degree and he and, and 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 he just threw it away, didn't use it. Now I want you to listen. I looked up this word a little bit, scrap. To grow, to leave a mark. And then I found something else very interesting. It literally means to draw a circle and to say, God, you can't penetrate that circle. It literally means, God, this is far as I'm going to let you go. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for parting the Red Sea. Thank you for the matter that came down. Thank you for getting me out of Egypt. Thank you for saving me. But God, that's about as far as I want you to go. And you know what we do? We limit Amen. what God could really do with our lives Amen. if we let Him. Let me ask you a question. Have you got a certain distance you keep God? Have you in your life got a certain distance where you say, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't want to get too fanatical. I, I don't want people to think that I have lost my mind. I, I, I don't want people to think that, that I've gone too far with God. Friend, can I say this? What we need to do is break out of our comfort zone, get out of the box. We need to move forward and we need to do more for God. Amen. Amen. Right. As soon as Pastor Crabtree or someone on the staff mentions, but we need help on the buses, or need help in the Sunday school, or need help in the choir, don't immediately say, whoa, 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 whoa. You don't see my circle, preacher. <laughs> You mean you want me to go on visitation? Wait a minute, preacher. You don't see my circle? Preacher, I've already scrapped. I've already drawn the line. Uh, preacher, I, I have met people in churches in 30 years that I have pastored that made up their mind a long time ago. This is far as I'm going to go with God. I can go no farther. Those people will never see revival. They'll never see the move of God. Thank you. 
Lust of the flesh, the lure of the world, but there is a third thing. The lies of the devil. Right. Take your Bible, same chapter, verses 58 through 61. The Bible says, and I just believe verse 56 go along with it, verse 57. <laughs> Yet they tempted and provoked the Most High God and kept not His testimonies. And turn back. Do you notice we've already heard that deal of turning back several times in this chapter? Remember I told you there came a generation of children as soon as a fight come up, they ran like a bunch of cowards? Don't come up to me and tell me, Pastor, well, you can't build no fundamental church. The only way you ever gonna have 600, 800,000 people in church is you you got to be like you know these others that that, don't, that just going out and everybody feels good and and, and you and you contemporary and, 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 and you drop the standards and all. Freaking don't, don't tell me that. Freaking I right. serve the same God in these days. I serve the same God right. all around the city. You know, God hasn't changed. God can still do it. Yes. Right. Amen. 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 Tell me that. I'm not. Don't put me in the box. Amen. 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 Right? Go back and look at it just a moment. Well, they provoked him, verse 58, to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. The lives of Satan. Let's look a little farther. When God heard this, he was wroth, greatly aboard Israel, so that he forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh. The tent which he placed among men and delivered his strength into captivity. And watch this. <coughs> and his glory into the enemy's hand. Mm. Do you know a Bible word for that? Ichabod. The glory has. <coughs> you know when God's glory is departing Baptist churches? is when we started drawing lines and said, God, we love you. Thank you for saving us. God, we remember the cross of the Red Sea. We certainly remember God. But man, but listen, God, we just got some things we got to do. Some lives we got to live. You see, God, there's this lust of the flesh. There's this lure of the world. And then there's the lives of Satan. And so what we're going to do, God, we're going to tell you, we're going to, we're going to scrap us a place here. Scrap us a place. We're, we're going to limit you, God. We're, we're going to mark and say, don't cross that line. Now, don't you listen. Tonight, if you have drawn a line across your heart and said, God, this is a place you can't go, mm -hmm. you will never reach your potential as a child of God. You will never get to the place you could get to. As long as you said, God, here's the mark. Yes. As far as you're going. you got to get out of that circle. Leave that boat like yeah. Peter did. You've got to move. Amen. You've got to go forward for God. You right. have got to make up your mind that you're going right. to do that. Because, so you know what happened when Israel limited God? Here's what happened. They listened to the lies of the devil. <laughs> they started, first of all, following after false gods. Notice the verses I just read talked about idols. You know what a false god is? Is anything you put above worship of Him. Right. It ain't some little statue in a Buddhist temple. That is a false god. The false gods in your life are the things you have to worship in the Lord. Right. 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 false god. Then they develop false religions. We're full of that today. Yes. Yep. Amen. But what's really scary, they started having false worship. That's strange right. fire. Yep, yep. Amen. Strange fire. You say, preacher, why say all that? In Psalm 78, you start off with the psalmist saying, this is how you have it. And the end of it, this is where you are now. All because you live it. No. Well, everybody stand to your feet, but don't go anywhere. Don't pack up. Don't, don't just stand to your feet. Don't look at what you have to bring I want you to look at me just a moment. 
to you. Listen to what I'm going to say to you. I want you to answer the question in your own heart. Are you limiting God in your life? Are there areas of your life that are not under complete surrender? Can I say this? As I prayed early this morning in my office, and as I finished this message up, I saw in my own life areas that I limit God in my own life. Listen, I'm telling you, It's those little foxes that spoil the vine. It's things in your life that if you don't ever let God be a part of, you never will completely have surrender. Now I feel a little bogged down right here. And what I mean by that is, I feel like this is where God would want me to stop and say this. We can always be what we are right now and we can shout going to heaven. It wouldn't be bad. Right. Right. If you haven't enjoyed church here today, your blessers broke. Amen. 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 I mean, it's been a good day in the world. Yes. And we could go to heaven like this and enjoy it. Or we could not limit God and see if He's got anything better. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. Amen. I'm the, of the opinion we haven't even touched <laughs> what God can do. That's right. But here's a bus captain, you haven't even touched. Brother James, you haven't even touched what God can do. That's right. Right. Here's the deal. You gonna let him inside your circle? Or you gonna say, God, that's far enough. Young people, your circle may be your dating life. You gonna let him in? You gonna say, God, is Bozo right for me? <laughs> <laughs> and if he's not, God, would you get him out of my life? Yeah. Amen. 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 You 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 gonna let him in your home? Are you going to say, God, there's things in our home that are keeping us from seeing our full potential? Right. God, we've got to get that out. Right. We don't need that. Amen. Are you going to let him in those relationships of people in your life that, that literally are holding you back? Right. Are you going to limit the Holy One of Israel because of the lust of the flesh and the lure of the world and the lies of the devil? Right. That's what they do. Is God limited in your life? Just how big is it? What could He do? As a church, <laughs> what could He do? So much more than God bring us up. What could He do? If. What could He do if we would stop limiting Him? Amen. 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 Anybody listen? Amen. Amen. Well, James, I want you to come. I don't want something on your mind, but I have one on my mind. You, you have something? What would you want me to do? I want the song to have that on the way over. Can we do that? Is that in our books? I wonder tonight, I think what? Let's change the tie so in the room. I wonder tonight if we're willing to get out of that box, out of that circle, and say, Lord, it's limitless. Somebody said, well, I'll tell you, with the economy, 
I don't know if you get tired of it or not. Well, that's kind of funny. Why in the world would God call him to Ireland?
surrender.